I got a call from Covenant Church in Willis, Texas, about uh, a candidate event they're doing, and uh, they brought up some questions. It looks like there's there's seven questions here. It looks like, uh, and I'm a pastor. I have the pastor King of Saints Tabernacle. And I think it's important for Christians to be engaged. Our nation is falling apart. We're in a crisis. And uh, we need to take a stand to save our country. Now, let's look at my position on these seven pivotal issues. Number one, life and abortion. I'm 100% pro-life. I don't believe in exceptions. Um, God created man and woman. And every human life is sacred and valuable. And our existence as human beings begins at conception. That's just, that's the, the Bible says, and that's science. It's science. And the Bible says, thou shalt not murder. You can't take an innocent life away through abortion. And I want to appeal to all women to, to don't kill your baby. And if you've done it, you need to repent. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. And I'm very disappointed with certain conservatives, such as uh, Nikki Haley or... Um, Sean Hannity, who are trying to moderate our position on, on abortion. Abortion is wrong. We can't compromise on that issue. It doesn't matter if it's rape or if it's incest. Uh, it's a human life, and you can't take it away. You can't punish a child for the circumstances of its conception. None of us are in control of that, and uh, it's wrong to take any human life away, an innocent human life. So I'm totally 100% opposed to abortion marriage, family, and society. I know this is becoming... Uh, less a popular position, but it's the right position, and I'm not going to compromise my integrity. And look, we live in a, a free country, and people can choose different lifestyles, and I don't want to deny people their rights to express themselves. Uh, but I believe, as a Christian, and I believe this is good for society, that marriage is only between a man and a woman. God created marriage. Jesus said in the beginning, God made them male and female. And said the two shall become one flesh. And what God has put together, let no man separate. And that is the institution of marriage. It's the foundation of human civilization. A man and a woman marrying. And with the intent of bringing in children to this world. To create progeny. To further the human species. And to create a, a better future for mankind. And uh, the marriage household and the marriage bed should be highly honored and respected. And uh, uh, these gay unions are not whatever they are. They're not marriages. And uh, that's, the Christ, that's the Christian position. That's the position of Jesus Christ. And it's better for society to value. Just look at, at, at boys and girls. I mean, 70% of men in prison, they didn't have a father at home. They, they came from a broken household. It affects girls, too. You need a mom. You need a dad. And that's good for social order, and that's what the government should be about, is a good social order, not undermining uh, society and civilization the way redefining marriage does. So I don't care if it's popular or not, the right position is defending the teachings of the Bible on marriage. Education, I believe in Christian schooling, I believe in homeschooling, and we need to get the public schools out of politics. And uh, it's horrible. we got critical race theory, other destructive Marxist ideologies like DEI and ESG and uh, all these wicked ideologies which are promoted. They, they come from academia and the colleges and universities. They're being inculcated in the minds of our, our youth in the public schools, and we have to stop left-wing indoctrination in our schools. That's why I support school choice, because something's got to be done about education. We've got a serious problem in our public schools we got like uh, the teachers' unions, the teachers' association, are radical left-wing organizations that are harming our country, and we have to get edu get politics out of education, get political indoctrination out of ed education. One way to do that: take the kids out of it, put them in homeschool, and uh, confront the whole problem uh, through school choice. So I, I believe in education. I have a doctorate. I value education. It's important, but we need a lot of educational reforms, and we got to get left-wing ideology out of our schools and our state universities. We gotta confront, we pay for the, the, the Texas State Colleges and if they're doing left-wing indoctrination, then uh, we need to confront that there and nip it in the bud. So education is important, we need educational reform and I believe in uh, support school choice. Second Amendment, um, I am very devoted to 
the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the right to peaceably assemble, the right to petition your government, foundational human rights that are guaranteed to us by our Constitution. And in the Bill of Rights, we have the right to bear arms, the right of self-defense. And it's biblical. And like I was saying, it's, it's true. At the Last Supper, uh, two of the twelve apostles were armed, and Jesus knew it. So he be- obviously Jesus believed that people had the right of self-defense. Yes, we love other people. We turn the other cheek. Uh, we forgive our enemies. But we have the right, if somebody's trying to harm us physically or take our lives, uh, to be able to defend ourselves. And I also believe that one of the reasons why people should be armed is to protect liberty and protect our constitutional systems. The duty of every American, if necessary, to take up arms to defend our Constitution from all enemies of our Constitution, foreign and domestic. And it looks like we have a lot of domestic enemies, and even people in our government, uh, enemies uh, to our constitutional system. And uh, we need to bear true faith and allegiance to our Constitution. So the Second Amendment is very important. And also in the Book of Esther, uh, King Xerxes, he couldn't change the laws of the Medes and Persian when the Jews were facing annihilation. But he says, you know, we're going to say that the Jewish people have a right to defend themselves against attack and to arm themselves, which they did. And there's a great defense, the, the defense and a great victory. Uh, so we need to protect the right of people uh, to have self-protection, the right to bear arms. Support for Israel. I've been in the Middle East. I've worked with Coptic Christians in Egypt and Syrian Christians in Syria and Iraq. Uh, the Aramaic-speaking Christians in Syria and Iraq. I've been to Israel. I've been to Egypt. I've been to Syria. I've been to Lebanon. I've been to Iraq, I've been to Kuwait, I've been to Qatar, I've been to the United Arab Emirates. And uh, we should love all people. Uh, we should love the Arab people. Not radical Islam, the, the, the evil ideology of radicalism needs to be opposed. But the Bible says that God loved the whole world, so he loves the Arab people as well. And we should remember our brothers and sisters in Christ that live in these countries. And these communities, are. the church in Egypt was founded by St. Mark, uh, St. Jude Thaddeus, the apostle of Jesus Christ, founded the church in According to tradition in Lebanon, and and uh, Thomas the Apostle founded the church in Syria and India, and in Iran. Uh, so these these communities, like uh, Saint Jude Day, has founded the church in in Iraq. Um, we should support our brothers and sisters in Christ in that part of the world. But we need to support Israel as well, and we need to be opposed to Hamas and other radical Islamic groups. Uh, been to Israel; it's a beautiful country, and uh, we should support freedom for all people. Uh, but that means to be unwavering in our support of Israel and unwavering for our, in our opposition to groups like Hamas. And Hamas is actually harmful to the Palestinian people. And when we oppose radical groups like that, we're actually benefiting all people, Arab and Jews in Israel. I appreciate what Donald Trump was doing with the Abraham Accords. And look at where we're at now. Trump was bringing peace and stability to the Middle East. And look what's happened since they stole the election and all the chaos they've unleashed in that region. It breaks my heart to see peace and progress, and we have these bad politics, bad foreign policy coming out of Washington, bringing ruin, destruction, and chaos around the world. We need to support Israel, and we need to support peace. And I like the Abraham Accords, bring people to the table, uh, work out peace agreements, support Israel, recognize Israel's uh, capital is in Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv, not somewhere else, and be unwavering in our support of Israel climate change and environmental policy. I don't believe in climate change. I, th- I think it's a big fraud. I think it's a, uh, a scam. I think it's all about growing the power of government and controlling people. They want to control the amount of water you can drink and what you can, the air you breathe and what you can eat and what you to eat bugs. These people are nuts. Uh, they're trying to create neo-feudalism. And notice the rules don't apply to them. John Kerry and Leonardo DiCaprio, they get a private jet. They can, you know, uh, they have their, their Expensive cars, their big jets, they're blasting, you know, so-called supposedly blasting pollution all over the place. But they don't want you to enjoy the lifestyle they enjoy. They want everybody to live in squalor, except for you know, these uh, you know, Klaus Schwab and uh, uh, George Soros and all these you know millionaires and billionaires trying to create neo feudalism. I remember, uh, and I think it's 2009. It, it snowed in in Cairo, and the pyramids were covered with with snow. Uh, they're white with snow. That happens maybe every you know 25 to 50 years, but I, I don't believe in, in uh, man-made climate change. I think it's a fraud. Uh, so, and I think it's also about you know, oh, we have to, you have to give us all these rights because the world's in danger, and you know, in five years, it's always in the future, it's always 30 years, we're going to be in a Mad Max movie. 
you know, we're going to be in a post-apocalyptic, you know, the world's coming to an end. Uh, but it's all a scam to uh, exploit the people and to create a globalism, a global uh, police state. So we need to oppose this. It's all fraud. Look at Dinesh D'Souza said this. If these people believe in, in global warming, they believe that, you know, the... Uh, uh, the coast, all these coastal cities are going to be underwater soon, and yet they're buying beachfront property. So uh, he says the market would reflect if that was true. And uh, these rich people, if they believed it, they wouldn't be buying beachfront property because they believe that within a year or two it's going to be underwater anyway. They don't believe it. It's all a scam. So we shouldn't fall for the climate change scam. Religious freedom and the, the repeal of the Johnson Amendment. President Johnson is a corrupt uh, president and uh, probably behind the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And uh, since he's such a wicked and evil person, he didn't want preachers preaching against him and exposing him for his wickedness and his evil. So he tried to pass uh, executive orders saying that preachers cannot preach about politics from the pulpit. But we have the freedom of pulpit, we have freedom of speech, and people should speak as they're moved by the Holy Spirit. Look in the Bible. Moses preached out against the political leader. John the Baptist did. He's martyred for it, but good for him. He's a prophet, and he spoke against the corruption of King Herod Antipas. And uh, Jesus himself criticized political leaders. And uh, indirectly, the whole gospel was, I mean, the Romans persecuted the church because they viewed it as a threat to their political system. Uh, you know, where they want to, this is what's going on right now. They want the state to be God. They don't want to allow people to worship any other God except for the power that they enjoy as controlling the power of the state. And uh, we're, we should all be held accountable before Almighty God, even our governments. And God's, Jesus says in the Bible that, that he's going to come back as the Son of Man and judge the nations. So think about how they, they used COVID as a pretense to close down the churches. A lot of churches went along with it, as they shouldn't have. Uh, Rodney Howard Braun and uh, John MacArthur, there's a few others. Uh, and what was the guy's name? He did, he did a movie called Super Spreader. I forget his name. But there were some people that opposed and stood up against what uh, the government is trying to do with the pretense of, of COVID to deny us our religious freedoms. Uh, so we have to fight back for pulpit freedom and for freedom of religion, the freedom to proclaim the gospel. That's what bothers me about the Democrat Party. So we have this chart here which shows these biblical positions and how the Republican Party is aligned with biblical principles and the Democrat Party is hostile to them. Uh, so we got Marxism going on, and, and the reason why for the church, people don't want to be involved in politics, but the, the sad fa fact of the matter is we're evangelical Christians. We want to lead by the Bible, live by the Bible, lead by the Bible. We want to preach the gospel. We want to share the good news of Jesus Christ. While the Democrat Party wants to, to control, they don't want you to worship God. They don't want you to believe in the Bible. They don't want you to preach the Bible. Uh, they, don't want, they want to interfere with your right to assemble. Uh, they want to prevent us from exercising our freedom of religion. They want to strip our rights away from us. And exalt one God. They're, you know, they have their holy scriptures, the teachings of their their messianic figure, Karl Marx, and uh, they're a threat. They're a threat to our ability to practice our faith and to preach the gospel, which we're commanded to do. That's what the Democrat Party is now. It's a Marxist organization. I wish that wasn't true, but that's where they are, and we need to defeat them. Maybe if they lose a lot of elections, they'll moderate and remove move more to the center. But right now, that I think all Christians need to open their eyes to the fact that the Democrat Party is hostile to Christianity, hostile to God, hostile to basic virtue and morality, and uh, they want to create a totalitarian police state. Watch the movie Police State by Dinesh D'Souza to see how close they are to achieving this goal. So Christians need to be involved, need to be engaged, and this is my stance on these biblical issues. So thank you, and God bless you, and I hope to see you on the campaign trail.